Oh, uh, this is a member of the Voice of Reason. And in, in case some of you don't know, I'm about to be the proud resident of this 95 Dutchman you see right in front of you. I'm going to be a full-time RVer. However, I'm going to be a full-time RVer in the dead of winter in the Hudson Valley. Um, for a lot of you who don't know, the Hudson Valley is basically, is the majority of our towns are built along the Hudson River. And anybody, if anybody can tell you that we have some of the most punishing winters, they sometimes nickname this area Mini Alaska, because our, our winters can sit there and are just as bad. First thing you have to know is putting hay bales underneath your RV is a good way to insulate and keep the cold air out. You don't have to worry about it. Worry about any bugs because it's too damn cold for bugs to do any real damage to your RV. But when you can't afford a skirt, this hay, the hay bales are, are a good way and um, basically jam packing them underneath your RV to where they don't touch the bottom, but most definitely do help. I'll give you an example. Let me show you some pictures as to what underneath one of these things looks like. You see, the bottom of these things, the, the bottom chassis of your average RV or your RV camper is made of primarily metal. And the ground gets very, very cold. And so and a lot of wind passes through there. So inside, it's going to be unbear unbearably chilly. Hay bales are actually a natural insulator. Man's been doing it for hundreds of years. Why should now be any different? Now, pretty little thing, huh? Another thing you want to know is that, you know, pretty much... Um, for the most part, you'd probably be boondocking it, which means using your septic tank inside this is not really going to happen. You don't run the water inside these, so the pipes also might freeze. Um, nine times out of ten, when you're in one of these, basically, it's um, there is no going to the bathroom inside one of these. Anybody who owns one of these, um, the, the hitch, the hitch RVs that don't that don't drive, will tell you that they don't let anybody. I mean, nobody. Take a dump inside one of these things. It, um, if you do, it will stink for weeks on end. The smell will never go away. And you need gallons and gallons of ammonia and hot water to pour down the toilet just to get the fucking thing cleaned out. So yeah, when you're basically living in one of these, there is no taking a dump inside the bathroom inside, inside one of these. It's you're going to hold it until you find a public toilet. And there's millions and millions of public toilets around America. So I don't want to hear any excuses. Just make sure you have a good stack of toilet paper. If you got to pee, just find some bushes. It's not that hard. If you got a crap, nobody takes a crap inside one of these things, like ever. Anybody, anybody who owns one of these will tell you, there is no taking a shit inside my RV. I don't think so. You find a public toilet, a porta john I don't care. Not in here. See these? These are gallon jugs. Like I said about the water, yeah, nobody runs the pipes inside of these in the dead of winter. It's too damn cold. And be, here's the you thing, you'd have to be running propane gas all day and all night long to keep the pipes heated. So which means nobody runs the pipes. They just use gallons and gallons of water that they, they, they stack up. Which means you buy a thing of Arizona, save it. You buy a gallon of milk, save the jug. You're going to need those for all, your, all the water you're going to be using. If you have an on an average of about 10 to 15, you only be needing water every two weeks, which is pretty damn good. All you need is a friend to take you to a place to either a, um, fill, up, fill up water or get one of those big pole and spring things, which are expensive. But however, you know, there are other, other if you ration right, get, you know, supplying them water is far and few between. Besides, it, it's just so much easier and simpler. You'd be surprised as how you can live. Without electricity or running water, the gas basically can boil and heat up your heat up your water for cooking, washing, and various things like. That. See this ridiculous looking looking thing? It's not just for keeping the sun out uh, sun out of your dashboard. These things also are good for if you put them all put them on the windows on the inside of your RV. Hold on, let me show you the inside first. Sorry, cool looking inside of mine, right? Here, here's the thing. Without these windshield covers. Well, um, this thing naturally would generate a lot, a lot of cold air, which means I'm um, sleeping in it would be unbearable. Hence, why I need these all over the windows. Only the bare minimum, minimum natural light would I actually need. During the night, during the daytime, maybe I could swing it, but you know, which means cooking would heat up the place enough. I'd only need to use a limited amount of gas. But here's the thing: you stock up on these and put them over your windows. It keeps it well heated, and cover that with a heavy curtain. You're good. See this? This is what's known as a private parking lot. A lot of the people who, say, um, who would park their cars in this actually pay money, about 100 bucks a month, to park their cars here. If you find the right one, the owner of these parking lots may even let you pay a monthly rental fee of $100 to stay there. 
provided they'll have some strict stipulations. Downside to it is there will be no water electric hookup. Which means, see those street lights in the photograph right there? You'd have to pay the pound to park underneath one of those things. You know that that would be the that would be the only real light you get at nighttime, and you'd have to have a um, have, have to have a portable small generator that's maybe worth like seventy five dollars on the internet, and you know, which your your electricity needs would have to be a minimum of like twenty minutes to a half hour. That's really that that that's called roughing it. That is until you can find a, a better spot with an electric hookup. How do I know this? Because this is the closest thing that I can come to is finding somewhere to park my uh, to, to park my camper. So that's that that's the reality. When you're just starting out, this is what you get. See, one of the things I've learned is that not every part of America is RV RV friendly. Some people are very unfriendly, and they they see uh, people live out of their RVs full time as derelicts, bums, junkies, like things like that, and. You know, um, or unfortunately, assholes like Randy Quaid in the movie National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation sat there, empty out their sewage, and say, "Shares full." Well, <laughs> that is so the total, total, total opposite as to how people are. Thanks to that movie, a lot of people who live in homes or who are basically the, uh, who are basically wealthy automatically have this illusion that everybody is Randy Quaid and they're going to empty out their fucking sewage tank in a storm drain, which is so not. I think I speak for the RB community when I say, fuck you, Randy Quaid, and fuck you, National Lampoons. You kind of left a stigma on us. Wow. Very unfair to do. What? So there you have it. Now you know the first basic things you're going to need to when you, when you start RBing full time in the Hudson Valley. You know, that, and it's, it's, a very, it's a very lonely proposition. You have to want to do it. And um, I know that I'm, it's going to be very rough for me for a while, but I'm going to be, it's, yeah, you have to really have a passion for it and want this lifestyle to do it. Um, if, you're, if you're gutsy enough to join me, by all means, I could use the company. In the meantime, this is a member of the reason, the a member of the voice of reason saying, Aho.